Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop. Today is Wednesday, October 9th and Hurricane Milton is still a very dangerous, powerful hurricane, even though it's weakening a little bit right now. As of two o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, the winds are at 130 mile per hour. That's sustained winds with higher gusts. Pressure's up a little bit at 944 millibars, but uh, the storm is a major threat though throughout central portions of Florida particularly, but just about the entire peninsula of Florida. What about Georgia and South Carolina? Well, I'll talk about that in just a moment. Right now, though, the storm is uh, at uh, about 150 miles southwest of Tampa, Florida, moving to the northeast at about 17 miles per hour. All right, let's go into the maps right now. And here we have it. Uh, we have the uh, National Hurricane Center forecast map and this red area here in the peninsula of Florida. That's a hurricane warning in effect. We have a tropical storm warning in effect for the coast of Georgia, uh, mainly for the immediate coast and for the offshore waters, and then a tropical storm watch in effect for the South Carolina waters. But uh, let's go into the satellite imagery. First of all, there you have uh, the storm itself. Uh, Tampa is right in this area right here, and there's the storm center. Now the eye is filling in. We're seeing some westerly shear beginning to flow into the area. West southwesterly shear, uh, winds in the middle and upper layers of the atmosphere. And that's uh, showing you can see the erosion on the uh, uh, southwest side of the storm from that. And that's causing the storm to weaken a little bit. And as the shear continues, that storm weakening will also continue, but it'll also cause the storm to stretch out a little bit wider over wider uh, area with the tropical storm force winds. Anyway, uh, the storm is moving in this direction here. It looks like it's going to go passing just south of the Tampa uh, St. Petersburg Clearwater area. Let's take a look at the National Hurricane Center forecast map. And uh, there you have it by tonight. Uh, it has a storm right over uh, portions of just southwest of Sarasota, Florida, Port Charlotte, uh, and south of the St. Petersburg, Tampa area. And there's Tampa Bay right in this region here. Now, Th that's the predicted center portion of the storm, but the storm can go anywhere inside this cone. The key here is that St. Petersburg, Tampa uh, area where you have this big Tampa Bay right here where the water could flow into that bay and cause horrendous storm surge flooding. Now, if the storm goes further to the north of this, the, wor the uh, worst possible storm surge tide could move into that region. If it goes further south, well, it'll spare St. Petersburg and Tampa a little bit, but it will decimate uh, you know, areas like Sarasota, down to Port Charlotte, even Fort Myers, uh, down to Naples, where they're going to see an excessive storm surge out there with the association of this storm. But then the storm moves across central portions of uh, Florida, uh, just to the south of Orlando, but that's the core of the storm. Uh, Orlando is on the northern side of the storm, and that's where most of the precipitation and, and, uh, and very strong winds will be associated with this storm itself. Let's take a look at the uh, radar summary from across this area. And there we can see the core of the storm, the eye right now, uh, is uh, just off the uh, coast of uh, 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 around Sarasota, between Fort Myers and Sarasota, and to the southwest of Tampa. Now, if it continues moving up in this direction, it will move into the Tampa area, but it looks like it's going to go just south of the Tampa area. But look what's going on across the central and southern peninsula of Florida. A lot of convection, showers, and thunderstorms with tornadoes in effect out in that region there. All right, let's take a look at the... Uh, uh, radar from Tampa, St. Petersburg, and there, look at all the, the purple is tornado on the ground warning uh, from the uh, weather services. And there you can see a tremendous amount of tornadoes already moving across the central and southern peninsula of Florida this afternoon. This is now uh, approaching three o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, and moderate to heavy rains continue to fall across the uh, center and northern portion of the uh, peninsula of Florida and the core itself. Let's see if we can look at the uh, Doppler radar uh, and the velocity on that and see if we can pick up any winds. Um, there is the uh, uh, the uh, west, the east side of the storm, and there's the west side of the uh, eye wall. And uh, looking at the wind velocity here, we're seeing 70, 80. Uh, 80 knots, 70, 80 knots, and so forth. On this side of the storm, on the west northwestern side of the storm, we're seeing over 100 knot winds. So yeah, it's, it's a very deadly storm, a hurricane right now, uh, moving across uh, in toward the peninsula of Florida. It looks like landfall is going to be sometime during the evening hours. All right, let's go back to the um, 
uh, radar summary over here. And I want to look at the, um, what we've been watching in our area, the power outages. Well, uh, I'm shifting the power outages map further south. We still have some scattered power outages left over from Hurricane Helene over about two weeks ago now. Still some scattered power outages out there, but now we're beginning to see the power outages showing up in portions of Florida. There's widely scattered uh, at this time, but expect to see this area right in here uh, to have massive power outages when the storm passes through uh, for the next several days. All right, uh, hours uh, going into the uh, tomorrow. All right, looking at the um, uh, regional radar summary there you can see it again a tornado watch in effect for the southern and southern and central portions of the florida peninsula until nine o'clock this evening probably the northern portions of florida will go under a tornado watch as well later on this afternoon or tonight all right looking at the uh uh, forecast models this is from the uh the rgem model that's a canadian model uh, that's the global environmental multi-scale model and it's r is for regional and uh Looking at the uh, forecast itself uh, shows the storm following basically the path the Hurricane Center is expecting and making landfall right around um, nine, 11 o'clock tonight, 3 Zulu. That is 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, let's go one more and make it midnight tonight. Should be on the coast just around south of the St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay area. And then moving uh, toward the east, northeast, continuing throughout the nighttime hours. And if you notice, the bulk of the precipitation is on the northern side of the storm. The north and northeastern side of this storm is going to be the most deadly aspect of this storm. Uh, still, very strong winds on the bottom side of this storm. And the, there also the winds here will be from the west, northwest, bringing in that more uh, continuation of the tidal surge across the western coast from uh, Florida from Tampa all the way down to the Florida Keys. All right. And then as we go uh, further in time by um, sunrise tomorrow, 12 Zulu, that's 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The storm is just off the coast around Titusville, Cape Canaveral area. As you notice, not much precipitation associated with this storm in the Georgia, South Carolina area. Some of this rain will be very, very light and maybe not even reaching the ground because we have a lot of dry air over the area. Right now, our dew points are only in the mid to upper 50s, uh, which is an indication of some very dry air across our area. So that's good news for us. Uh, let's take a look at the wind forecast. And uh, that's right over here. There we go. And it shows that the, uh, the winds associated with the storm will, will be very strong in and around the core itself. And then out in the offshore waters of Georgia, particularly, uh, we're going to see some very strong storm force winds, winds in excess of 54 miles an hour offshore, not on the uh, uh, coastline or in the, on the islands or the land. However, the islands and the lands, we might see some winds gusting. Let's take a look at the wind gust um, for our area. Uh, we might see the winds gusting around 35, 40 miles an hour at times tomorrow. Uh, we can see these winds. Let's look at St. Simons Island, see if I can find it here. Um, and uh, yeah, winds approaching 40 miles an hour. So it, we, we could see 40 to 45 mile per hour wind gust along the, uh, particularly the southern islands south of Sapelo Island, including St. Simons and Jekyll Island. But uh, again, going back to the uh, maps itself uh, and the... Um, center of the storm right here let's take a look at the total amount of precipitation expected from this and let's take a look at that total accumulated precipitation and there again on the north side of the storm center there you can see the storm center is so expected to go right along this line here and here we have very heavy rains uh 10 to 12 inches across the uh, a good portion of uh, the peninsula of florida north of basically i4 about i4 and northward very very heavy rains which will induce a lot of urban flooding uh, across this area here, along with the high winds, uh, toppled trees, power lines, you're going to have severe flooding as well. But not so much in the Georgia, South Carolina area. So we're looking, we're looking okay. It's not looking good for Florida whatsoever. All right. Here's the other issue I wanted to show you, the peak storm surge forecast. A little bit of good news for us. Uh, the uh, Hurricane Center has dropped our levels from uh, two to four uh, to uh, one to three feet uh, or one to three foot tide uh, surge. Uh, the tide will be at 7.2 feet today and tomorrow. Uh, so if you add one foot to that, that's 8.2. Three feet to that is 11.2. The, um, um, at, excuse me, 10.2, I can't add yet, 10.2. 
And the flooding around the Savannah area, and most of the coast of Georgia, occurs around nine and a half to 9.8 feet. We start seeing the marshes overflowing. So even at a 10 foot tide, I, it's nothing to be overly alarmed and concerned about. South of the Ottawa River, it could be a little bit higher in and around the uh, Brunswick, St. Simons, Jekyll Island area. We might see a little bit more water um, maybe licking at the Taurus Causeway on St. Simons Island uh, at the time of the high tide. Looking at the tide levels right now, uh, here we have the tide is running about a foot and a third, about 1.3 feet higher uh, than expected. So uh, right now, the tidal surge is 1.3 feet, and so it's anywhere between 1 and 3 feet, uh, the expected tidal surge to go along with this. All right. Again, things look very, very serious for portions of Florida. Not so bad for Georgia and South Carolina. Possibility of some storm, uh, uh, tropical storm force winds in the coastal areas of Georgia, perhaps uh, tropical storm force winds at 39 miles per hour. Again, this is nothing like Hurricane Helene's winds that we saw moving across Georgia and western South Carolina. Those winds were 70 to 80 miles an hour, some gust up to 90 miles per hour. Nothing like that in Georgia whatsoever anticipated with uh, trop or with tropical system or Hurricane Milton passing well to our south now. But for Florida, different story altogether. So uh, with that being said, things look very good for our area. After this storm passes through, we'll be seeing clearing weather conditions and temperatures uh, mostly in the 70s for the highs and in the 50s for the low. I'm talking lower 50s, even in the inland counties over the weekend going into Friday and Saturday mo uh, mornings, we could see lows in the upper 40s in some locations. So get your pumpkin spice uh, delights out and enjoy the autumn weather that's coming on in and get ready to help the uh, folks of Florida recover from this terrible, terrible uh, hurricane. National Hurricane Center is saying that this is probably going to be the worst hurricane ever to hit the west coast of Florida in and around the Tampa area. The last time a storm anywhere near this capacity was in 1921, I think it was, uh, where they had a hurricane category three hitting there. Right now, this storm is a category four. Uh, so with that being said, um, pray for Florida and I'll see you later.